this is Farshid with another video just for you. So today I want to show you how to rebuild a toilet uh, water tank. As you can tell, I've removed everything from this tank and uh, I have my new parts sitting on this side and I have some tools. So uh, let's start off by talking about what we do after we've removed the tank. So if you have issues with removing the tank look at my other videos that they talk about how to remove the tank because uh you may run into some issues with uh, bolts uh, that they hold the tank to the bowl could be rusted and that's where you got to use some hacksaw or uh, an oscillating tool to get in between the bowl and the tank and cut those uh bolts off so look at those videos and uh, once you're at this point here you can take a look at what i would suggest doing uh, as we uh, rebuild the entire uh, tank here so once uh, i have the tank removed i take a look at um, the all the holes to make sure there are no cracks especially around the uh, where the bolts are because uh, there are times where folks over tighten bolts and uh, create uh, cracks in the uh, uh, tank and this is the best time to inspect it to make sure that you're not going to run into an issue down the road so once the inspection is done then we'll take a look at our parts that we have here so this is our fill valve and a uh, couple things to keep in mind when we're talking about a fill valve there are a couple of adjustments to um, set on the fill valve in order to get the desired water level height so in this particular tank this tank's been in place obviously for uh, quite a while and you can tell there's a mark here that shows me the water level and if there are no issues with flushing and the water level is just fine i would suggest putting the water level back to where it was prior to rebuilding the tank so how do you do that we use our uh, fill valve there are two adjustments one is a coarse adjustment one one is a coarse adjustment which is this one here we move this collar up and you can slide this uh, up and down on the shaft in order to get the desired height which will adjust the height of essentially we'll just uh, we'll adjust the height of our float here this is our float that allows water to come in and once the float hits its maximum it shuts the valve off off the, on the top and uh, stops the water from flowing in so once we have the course adjustment set always keep in mind to put the collar back otherwise you're gonna have a mess on your hands so once the course adjustment is set, then you have a fine adjustment up here that it will tell you to uh, increase your turn in this direction, clockwise, and decrease the level of the water counterclockwise. Obviously, you want to do that as you fill up and then you adjust, flush again, and check and see if your level is where it should be. So that's our uh, fill valve. The other thing to keep in mind is that uh, it comes with a seal. The seal goes inside the tank and our nut, which whenever you see nuts that they have these wings uh, sticking out of the sides, that means hand tightened. So that's our uh, fill valve. And then uh, next thing we have is our flush valve. This valve sits in the center of the bowl and as you would uh, suspect when we're ready to flush using the handle we pull this chain up opens up the flapper and the water rushes through so that's one way the water gets to the bowl the other way the water gets to the bowl which some people don't know is from the center of our flush valve this is our overflow tube so whenever the water is filling using our fill valve there is a tube that connects from here 
to this port that allows water to flow to the center of our bowl. That's where you see the water accumulating in the center of the bowl. That's where it's coming from. Okay, so we'll go through all of that once we assemble it. So that's uh, our um, flush valve. One thing again to keep in mind, there is a seal right here that sits inside of our tank and the nut will secure our flush valve to the tank. And then uh, underneath to seal the tank to the bowl, we have this gasket that will sit under here. And then we have our bolts. And I'll show you what my preferred method of uh, bolt assembly, the order of our um, plastic washers, stainless steel washers, and the nuts are, and uh, hopefully that will make sense to you. And then last but not least, we have our lever. So one thing to keep in mind on these levers, so since the action for flushing is in this direction, the nut is opposite thread. So this is where it throws some people off where we're all used to taking a nut and turning it clockwise, righty tighty, lefty loosey, doesn't apply to this. You can turn this thing clockwise all day long, it's not gonna tighten up. So here, this one, in order to tighten it up, you have to go the other direction. You gotta go the opposite. So counterintuitive based on what we've uh, learned all these years, but the reason for that is so when the lever is going this direction, you're not loosening a nut every time you're flushing. So hopefully that makes sense. So we'll uh, put that, see, I'm doing the same thing now. I'm going back the other way to uh, <laughs> the wrong way to uh, take it off. All right, so let's take a look at the assembly process. Uh, what I like to do first is um, take a look at my uh, flush valve. Uh, the reason I say that is because there are a couple of things to keep in mind with your flush valve. So we're going to just set it in there and take a look at a couple of things before we go through the whole assembly process. I'm just going to um, put this nut on here. I'm not going to tighten it up all the way. I just want to take a look at a couple of measurements. And uh, once you see what I'm talking about, it will make sense to you. All right, uh, two things. When you read the instructions on the flush valve, the instructions, at least in this particular brand, it tells you that you want your um, top of, let me take this off. So the top of your overflow tube to be half inch over your water line. The reason for that is, again, this is serves two purposes. One is an overflow. So if uh, the toilet tank is overflowing for whatever reason or valve got stuck something happened um, so the water will not come over the top of the tank so it will flow through this and goes to our bowl so that's the reason to tell you that to make sure this is at least half inch above your water line because if you're if you're the same level as a water line and uh, um, the water will continue to flow through here. So you're gonna have a large, large water bill. So that's one thing to keep in mind, having this, the top of this uh, flush valve, uh, the uh, overflow tube, half inch above our water line. So this is quite a bit over half inch. Now, second thing that most people miss is that, take a look at this. So uh, if the water level comes up to this height in order for it to get out of our tank in case of an emergency, in case of an overflow um, situation, where, where else can the water go? So we know for sure that the water is not going to come through the top because this is lower than our top. However, look at this. You got a hole here that the flush handle 
where the lever sits in. You have to make sure that the height of this, the top of it, is below this opening. Otherwise, if you get into a point where the water is overflowing and it gets up to this level, then if you don't have an ideal exit for the water, you're going to have it going through this hole here. All right. So keep that in mind. You want this to be lower than the opening of the uh, handle and you want it to be higher than your water line. Um, there are some uh, versions of this that they sell, which is adjustable. I've used those in the past. The issue I have with those is with the adjustment, it's a, a telescopic adjustment, and there are times where the seal between the two tubes give. Now you have water flowing through the overflow between the adjustment and uh, you're gonna have again a large water bill. So I prefer these. Once you set them once, you're done, then uh, you don't have to come back to them hopefully uh, next five, six, uh, 10 years. All right, so we'll take a look at this adjustment here and we are just for practical purposes, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and show you how to cut this, but uh, um, yeah, we're actually below this. I don't need to cut this, but let me show you what, how you would do it in case you need to cut it. That's why I like to put this in there and test it before I put anything else in there. Makes uh, life a little bit easier when it comes to uh, the disassembly process. This is what happens when you're right-handed. You gotta have it, I gotta have it flipped on this side in order to be able to take this guy off. So once you've made your proper measurement of where you want this thing to cut, uh, I would usually take a little piece of tape and put that tape all the way around where my cut needs to be. Make a mark for my cut, use my saw and go around, rotate the shaft and you get a nice clean cut out of it. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and now that we've made that uh, assessment that our tube height, the overflow tube is just right, let's go ahead and go through the assembly process. So we'll start off with our fill valve. So the fill valve, as I mentioned, there's a tube that connects up here that needs to go and end up in this hole here. So I would prefer to put the position of this nozzle for our tube toward my flush valve. So here we go. Um, this also you can adjust it once it's assembled in the tank because in most cases you're not gonna know how high the water level is based on how the valve is working uh, after you assemble everything, right? Well, here's actually, uh, okay, here we go. So we put this in here first. I take a look at my orientation right about there and hold it. And we put our nut from the back side, just like that. See how that is moving around on us. That's it. Okay, here we go. There we have that is in place, right? Nice and snug. All right, so there's our um, connection for our tube to go to our flush valve. So the next thing I do is put my flush valve in place where it makes sense, meaning this is gonna be a bolt this is going to be a bolt here. I don't want to put this over here just in case down the road I need to have access to my bolt. And even now, if I put this in first and if I need to have uh, access to the bolt to put a screwdriver in there, I can't do that. So I put it in a nice position here. Also keeping in mind that our lever comes out here. We want to have a nice 
easy actuation. So I would say this is about a good spot right here for me. So I'll again do the same thing, push it in and put this nut on. Now with this, since it doesn't have those ears that I was talking about, that means you need to use a wrench to tighten this up. So before we tighten it up, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at my positioning again. I like to get it a little bit more this way if I can, right there. Okay, so here we have our tube. We'll put it on here. Obviously you can put this on um, before you assemble it, but uh, unfortunately I didn't do that. Now I noticed that uh, I put my hand behind it to support, to make sure I don't snap the nick of our uh, fill valve. Then we insert the tube onto this adapter and then the adapter will sit on the top just like that, okay? Now, one thing you want to make sure is that when we put the lid on, there is no issue with our tubing here, okay? So, we may have to cut this a little bit shorter, or better yet, we may just rotate it this way here so it's under our uh, lid, which it is now. All right, so we've put our uh, fill valve in. Uh, I'm sorry, a fill valve in. We put our flush valve in. So, we're going to turn it around like this and uh, i use this tool here some people use a wrench but uh, i use this tool here which works uh, both for a three inch flush valve which i failed to mention this is actually a two inch flush valve three inch a little bit bigger but uh, same concept so it works for a three inch and also works for a two inch so i put this on here like this and i hold the valve from the top rotate it until it's nice and snug, all right? So this is plastic. You wanna make sure you don't go too tight on it. Otherwise it'll snap on you. So this is a nice tool. Some people use a wrench again, but I like to use this. All right, so we'll take a quick uh, inventory of our uh, stuff that we put in here. There we have our, again, our fill valve, our flush valve, our flappers in place. So next thing, let's put the bolts in. That way you'll see why I do it the way I do it. All right. All right. So this is the bolt assembly that I like to use. And I'll put a picture of it uh, on our screen for us, the, the, the whole entire assembly. And uh, so we have our brass bolt. We have a rubber washer, stainless steel washer, and stainless steel nut, rubber washer, stainless steel uh, washer again and I like to use wing nuts and the reason I like to use wing nuts is the way I put it together you really ha don't have to torque down and tighten this um, too tight because again when you tighten these uh, over tighten them I should say you take a chance of cracking uh, the bowl or the tank so we'll go and take this part of the assembly off, take the knot off. So the way I like to do it is take all that stuff off. We leave our um, rubber washer in, put the bolt through the hole, stainless steel washer next. Just like that, did you see that? That was good, huh? That's gonna be on the blooper, there we go right there and put the nut on so the reason i do it this way is to um, isolate the tank from the bowl when it comes to sealing these holes so in this particular case having this nut here that isolates the sealing process that way I'm not dependent on the bowl and how tight I make this nut as it attaches to the bowl. So here we go. We're going to tighten it up. Uh, and again, you, I'll tell you, I'll show you how tight you want to make this so you don't go too far on it. But uh, you tighten it up until it feels a little snug. Then take a quick inspection here. Yeah. So my washer is collapsed just a little bit, but I don't want to 
I don't want to cut into it. So there it is. That's good enough right there. And then we put our second one on the same way, right? There's that. There's that. Put this in. Center it up. Put my washer on next. Then the nut on top of that, right? And there we go, right there. All right. Put that nut on there. Center with the hole. Good. And same thing again. Put the screwdriver inside. it up just to a point where I feel that is snug meaning I can't loosen it up with my hand right and right about here I believe we'll take a look yep that's good and then the rest of the hardware basically goes like this so our bowl sits here don't forget to put this guy on. That seals between the tank and the bowl. So our bowl sits here. These two go, these two bolts go through uh, the holes in the bowl. So the bowl sits here. Underneath, then I put a rubber washer and then our stainless steel and then tighten it up. And I have another video that shows the whole process, but that gives you that gives you an idea. All right, next we're gonna put our lever in. And um, why do I change the lever? Well, by the time you it's uh, when it's time to replace these, these levers are either rusted, they're old, and why not, right? So put that in, and uh, we got to remember again that when we put this nut on it's not this direction it's the opposite direction that tightens up okay so it tighten it up, you tighten it up with going the opposite direction okay tighten it counterclockwise in this case all right and then we take a look at our um, lever okay and uh, our flapper and the chain uh, the chain you can adjust how much slack you have. I usually like to have just enough so the flapper with the lever in the down position, the flapper is not pulled up, but not too much slack either. So somewhere in this area here. So I take a look at, it needs to be that link. And you can remove these clips, right? So I can just go ahead and uh, take this clip off of here like that these are the fancy ones where they got a double loop to make sure that the chain doesn't come off all right so one more time we'll take a look at our chain and as you can tell the lever has uh, three different holes so you can choose which one you want let's go with the center one and somewhere around here and allowing maybe one link or two for the length of our hook. Then we attach our hook to here. So somewhere like this, it's pretty, uh, it's not uh, really taut and it's not really relaxed. And here we have it. And you notice that, uh, let me flip it this way so you can see. First, noticing that when we use our lever, our uh, flapper comes all the way up. Now, flipping it to the side, oops, our towel just gave. All right, low budget staging here. All right, here we go. All right, so here on the side, if you look and see, the lid is gonna go here. You have to make sure that when you flush, your lever does not go above your lid height, right? Top of your tank, because you're gonna, 
if the lever goes higher, then you're gonna hit the lid and you're not gonna get a full flush. So you wanna make sure that when you activate the lever, the flapper opens up all the way without the lever going past the top of the tank. Okay, there you have it. So that's a rebuilt uh, tank. So here's how you can check to see if you have any leaks through these bolt holes. This is because the way I have the order of bolt, washer, washer, nut set up so the tank is isolated. I like it this way and it works well for us. So what I can do is, let's see, take our a gallon bucket put some paper towel underneath so I can tell quickly if I got a leak put this on top of it now let's let me show you the side view of it maybe I can maybe I can't right there so it fits in there just like that let me take a look at the video make sure we're okay yeah, we're good okay I'll come back a little bit more for you right there okay now let's, let's take a little bit of water and just enough to cover the bolt holes right you don't want to go past the opening of your flush valve This way you can tell if you got any leaks or not. Let's see how good I am, boys and girls. Put it down good. There you have it, nice and dry. That's what you want. Reassemble the tank, put it back on your uh, toilet bowl, go through the same process as I described earlier. Rubber washer up, followed by our stainless steel washer, and then the wing nut, tighten it up. When you go, on th when you go through that process, tighten up one, Go back to the other one, tighten up the other one a little bit more. Go back and forth so you get your tank nice and uh, level. Then you go through the flush uh, process. Then uh, you hook up your water line, turn the valve back on, and uh, let the water fill up. Make sure you're at the, the level that you like. If not, you can make your adjustments. As I mentioned, there's a coarse adjustment down below. There's your fine adjustment up here. Flush. Check the level again. If you're happy with it, then uh, let it sit there uh, for a little while and see if you get any leaks. If you don't have any leaks, flush it a few more times. Double check to make sure that this seal is nice and tight.